the Batman. So the Batman is about a young vigilante in Gotham who's just <laughs> just may been have at heard it. of him. <laughs> yes, yeah, who's who's just been at it for two years, as explained early in the film. Uh, our young Bat is played by Robert Pattinson. Have, if you haven't heard, uh, who is a, a struggling Bruce Wayne, who's who's having a very challenging time uh, getting through the mire of 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 crime and 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 awfulness that runs through Gotham. Gotham is classically in Batman movies a terrible city and a terrible place to live. Uh, and and our young bat is is very much struggling with that and and what it means to respond to that whether he is is pure unadulterated anger or maybe something a little bit more you know he he calls himself vengeance and he means uh, our 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 Batman is not a follow up to the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises it is not a follow up to any of the Christopher Nolan films rather this is an entirely new take on the character this is not like Ben Affleck's Batman this is a new thing new Alfred new Batman. Uh, and a new masked villain, I should say, who's mm-hmm. terrorizing Gotham in a serial killer style outfit that looks a lot like uh, uh, David Fincher's uh, Zodiac or David David Fincher's Seven, uh, played by Paul Dano. Uh, the movie also stars Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon, and Andy Serkis as Alfred Pennyworth. The movie is The Batman. Andy, what'd you think? Uh... I really liked it. Uh, I, I was a little <laughs> yeah, <me too>. worried <laughs> about the runtime because it's like I don't I don't care how good you're you know how much look much I'm looking forward to it, if you know it, it's a long time to, to ask for someone's attention. Uh, but it totally works. Uh, I was glued for the first like two hours and fifteen minutes something. I was with it every step of the way, and about halfway through, I needed to use the restroom, and I kept thinking, "Oh, this is a good spot." And, but then, like, no, something good's happening, and then that kept happening. Like every every ten minutes, I was what waiting to get a break. Um, but no, it, it was pretty fantastic. We, we get, uh, this is not an origin story. Um, it's important to point out. This is like Batman year two. Like he's been doing the bat thing for a little bit, but he's still n- not got it down a hundred percent. Things are worse in Gotham. He says worse than ever. Uh, somehow what he's doing is not being super effective. He can't really figure out why we get this rain so drenched dark you know when, when you thought batman couldn't get any grittier any darker um yeah. we've had it it's like I, i've heard it compared to blade runner level yes. constant uh, constant rain yeah it's and always what, raining in gotham and what we get is this detective noir uh that is heavily heavily focused on detective this isn't the kind of batman movie that's focused on action scenes there are action scenes but it's not like a nolan kind of summer blockbuster uh, that kind of film it's really about the detective work of finding figuring out what are these why are these murders happening how can we stop them and all the players uh kind of that that are involved uh the penguin obviously the riddler other people that show up uh, and this is one of the things i was kind of concerned about was like how they, there's a lot of characters how are you go, going to how are you going to get them all working together and intertwined? And I kind of thought I was worried it might be kind of episodic where you're like, okay, the first half of the movie is going to be penguin second half of the movie. Riddler. Yeah. Yeah. But what they, but what they managed to do is involve everyone all at once uh, at, in what's going on. They really weave this, this complex tale of like between the, the police and like the mob and then Riddler out outside. That's kind of a page out of the dark night, actually. Uh, of, of having multiple kind of conflicting entities, and then you have Catwoman as well, who's kind of a kind of a gray character. Like like she's she's not a bad guy. Like they, they didn't make they purposely didn't make her a thief in this uh, this this version, but she is, she does kind of walk in in both both worlds, both in the crime world and trying not to be <laughs> be a criminal as well so a lot of it works really well it has a few few issues but overall it's a huge hit uh, i really liked it and um yeah that those are my thoughts yeah lots of nuanced characters lots of nuanced dialogue um a lot of simple action and a whole lot of detective work make up the batman um i want to start talking about this by by talking about kind of the tone uh that this movie is taking 
when you make a Batman movie, you've got a bit of a challenge, right? You've, you've got to one meet the audience's expectations who have seen previous Batman films. And there's been a handful and they have come from different directions. So you've got to, you've, you've got to meet them on that cinematic level, right? It has to be a movie that you like and enjoy and is worth watching. And at the same time, you have to pay service to the character, the property that we're building from Batman. And it has to be a good Batman story. And that's not always easy, right? Like Batman is more than just a guy running around in a mask, chasing crazed people and putting them in Gotham and putting them in Arkham. Like he's a lot more than that. He's a detective. He's, he's, he's at some points, a, a, a bit of a playboy at other points, not a playboy at all. Like he's a very nuanced character. And Matt Reeves kind of takes that challenge uh, head on in the Batman so I feel like I can confidently say for people wondering if this is going to be better or worse than Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, which is usually hailed as not only the best Batman movie, but one of the best comic movies of all time. Um, I don't know. I, I don't I don't necessarily know if it's a better movie. It is three hours. And I'm going to be honest. Sometimes you start to feel the weight of that, especially in the second half of the second act. Um, but it's a really good Batman movie. It's a yeah. really good Batman movie. Um and in that way, I think it really stands apart, like, and and really makes a name for itself in a unique way. This is not a Batman movie we've seen before. I mean, I know that sounds silly. You've never seen the Batman, but yeah. <laughs> like, in this way, you haven't. Like, this is something different. This is something unique. This is something special. And I'm really glad it, it exists. It feels like a three three hour art house movie, um, in, in, in in a lot of points. And like, I can't believe it's making this much money and this many people are going to see it. It's great. It's great. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased at the reception to this odd approach to the Cape Crusader. I, I've heard it compared uh, to something like Hamlet or Shakespeare that where, you know, you bring back the usual players, but you have to, you know, you have to do something different. You got to do something new. You can't just do the same thing every time when, when you kind of bring the character on screen. And that's that's what we get. I, I heard a great comparison that this is more bat and less man uh, where Robert Pattinson is in the suit the majority of the time, and it's less concerned with Bruce Wayne uh, as a person as much as previous films. Uh, the Nolan trilogy does a good job of, of him having having to have this uh, public Bruce Wayne persona as like this uh, aloof playboy, and that's a big part of you know so that movie and some other movies. And this one, it's it's really he's rarely Bruce Wayne, and it's not really when he is it. It's not really important to to what what's happening it's he's in the suit most of the time solving crime um <laughs> yes, and like, like yeah. and like i said it's very much a detective thing it's about looking for clues and with the riddler it's perfect un, un, unmasking riddles and finding riddles within riddles uh those kinds of things so we get a very different kind of movie it's very i don't want to say slow pace it, it but it takes its time and that's probably so long there's so many good scenes that could have been either left out or just thrown away or rushed or hurried and like he'll just really take his time with uh, a lot of the conversations but between just all all the char characters he really takes his time yeah i think director matt reeves um really really i mean and also co-writer uh it really is 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 the star here that we're that we're looking at um not only in his presentation of the film but like his writing the, the writing in this movie is stellar um it's Matt Reeves formerly directed Cloverfield. He directed two of the Planet of the Apes films, the last of which I did not think was a short endeavor. Um, and the Planet of the Apes movies seem like movies that would be pretty silly, but those movies not only did great, but were also really well received. People, a lot of people really liked them. And that's because I think of his writing. He helped write War of the Planet of the Apes, and I believe Dawn of the Planet of the Apes as well. Um, so Matt Reeves has definitely got some experience kind of writing odd characters in uniquely grounded situations and that's exactly how he approaches batman our, our 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 bat is two years into it does not even really have the full trimmings of a bat outfit yet like still doesn't even really look like the scariest bat you'd ever think like he's kind of got goofy boots on and he looks a little funny like when you're far away sometimes <laughs> Um, and he's not as tall as anybody else, right? Like Robert Pattinson isn't like six foot four. Like he's a pretty average sized dude. But the way the bat is presented in this movie makes him feel so grounded despite being this goofy character. Like he is supposed to be an odd guy. 
<laughs> people often refer to him as a freak um, because they look at this guy who's walking around in an outfit as a vigilante fighting people like kick ass. And they're like, you're insane. But then they look at him and they really look at him in, in, his, in his piercing blue eyes. And there's just nothing there. <laughs> like Bruce Wayne has been so run down to just like a, a nub of a person. And, and he is not sleeping and he is not well. And, and he's not in his right mind at this point. Um, and Pattinson plays him as this character who just has this like striking gaze because there's there's truly this element of, of sociopathy under everything. And it makes our bat feel so much more real than kind of this like Adonis figure we saw in Christian Bale's Batman or maybe kind of this grounded individual we saw in somebody like Michael Keaton or maybe even somebody fantastic like Val Kilmer Our Pattinson's Batman is depressed <laughs> like, and, and, and he, he probably needs to take his meds but like his meds are beating the hell out of people in gotham and he can't wait to do more of it it's great yeah absolutely we get we get a very unique batman like we said he's i was like did he even have to hit the gym could i be batman <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> uh, you know and it's not that you know, you don't have i don't think we actually ever see him with like his shirt off hardly it's not that that kind of like leering like he like you said he doesn't have to look like an no. adonis um it, it's much more concerned with the character with the mood with the, the mystery uh which is something else i think we can start to get into yeah at the beginning we we, we there is the, the murder of a political figure who is the rival of, of in an election and other people targeted are also political P p political figureheads and there's a, this whole issue about corruption in gotham and so the riddler kind of has this weird uh, or it's, it's a unique perspective because he's he, he's cleaning up the streets he's he's essentially kind of do what batman's doing at a different yeah, angle he, right. he's like there's corruption these politicians are corrupt i'm gonna take them out yeah like Rid riddler is a is a vigilante who believes he is tolling out justice right which makes him an interesting foil for the bat like he's he's this guy he's this guy who's running around not following the rules like beating up other people who aren't following the rules um fortunately the bat has a wonderful relationship with uh detective gordon uh, who i guess isn't isn't commissioner at this point is he, he, commissioner he is gordon? he is not because we do hear someone else references the commissioner Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yes, Detective Gordon, played by Jeffrey Wright, uh, is is oft featured in this movie. Actually, it's really unique. He's in it quite um, a, quite a bit. He, yeah. And Andy mentioned at the top that this was a detective story, and it is very much so. Most of our scenes are Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Most of our scenes take place at night. They are working through crimes like one after another, following these kind of these these uh, kind of breadcrumbs step by step that the Riddler's leaving behind in his bloody wake. And Detective. Gordon's a big part of that. He's a sounding board for Batman. They often talk to each other, sometimes in whispers. Uh, he'll turn on the bat signal and Batman will meet him up there. Like he's actually really prominently featured in this movie. And Jeffrey Wright is subtle. And I, I think he can do more with the role. But for what it is, he doesn't get in the way and he doesn't slow anything down. He's a pretty good fit. Like he, he keeps up with the bat. All right. Like they do. OK, I, I, I like him just fine in this movie. Uh, additionally, we've got another kind of foil for our Batman character in uh, Selena Kyle, Zoe Kravitz's character, uh, who is Catwoman. Uh, much more grounded in this movie. Yes. Yeah, so, so we find her actually w working uh, with, not with, but at uh, one of the establishments where that, that's run by the Penguin, the famous Iceberg Lounge, uh, which is a staple of, of the comic books. Yes. Um, it usually looks like a giant iceberg in there. Uh, they opted out of that uh, look. look <laughs> I really the, thought it might look like the, the set of Die Another Day, that James Bond movie. Like <laughs> exactly. Giant igloo, yeah. So we find her as as kind of a server bartender uh, with her, you know, kind of her wits about her always, her ears to the ground, and, you know, she eventually runs into uh, the Batman at night and uh, they kind of need to work together. She, she needs his help to, to find someone who's gone missing and he needs her help to kind of get on the in, inside with, uh, you know, uh, what's going on with, the, with the penguin. What's going, what goes on in the, inside the iceberg lounge. That's right. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, she's in the movie a lot and in a really important character. A lot of times Catwoman gets sidelined. Uh, I kind of feel a little bit about that way about Anne Hathaway's uh, character. 
Um, but Zoe Kravitz is is really really good in this and, and her character is very very important to everything that goes on she's in a lot of scenes zoe kravitz is, is a great fit for this role because she's very alluring and that's exactly what bruce wayne needs to run into at this point in in his in his bat career right like he needs to start making connections and meeting people in the city that can help him achieve things like obviously he already knows detective gordon but selena kyle is a great step to getting to the penguin and into the iceberg lounge and finding out more about what officials in the city really are crooked and aren't and finding out how much of gotham really is rotten to the core um additionally you know, you get a little bit of a love interest right a little bit of romance if you're watching on facebook you can see the screenshot i put up like that ah, okay you got you got your girl and your and your guy your cat and the bat as she says um and she's a great fit for it i i i like her i don't know i don't know i don't know if i can i, I think i like her more than Anne hathaway i don't think i don't know if i like her as much as michelle pfeiffer but michelle pfeiffer is pretty stunning as catwoman so it's i think it's an unfair comparison yeah i was, I was gonna um, say that the michelle pfeiffer version is so it, it's, it's, it's amazing but in, in a different kind of way you know <laughs> it's amazing uh it's true um but like you said like the movie doesn't if, sorry yeah. i don't know how they they greenlit like catwoman as a dominatrix <laughs> In yeah like, in like 1992 they knew what they were doing my god i'm so glad that got committed to film uh yeah like like andy said towards the top you don't find yourself like split between these characters all that much and that's really unique some of them are in the movie more than others uh, you may have heard rumblings on the internet that alfred uh, play baby circus is not in this film much that's true and and Catwoman does drop out for a chunk of the second act because you know Batman's doing an investigation, working stuff out, and you do miss Penguin at a time. For the most part, like it really feels like a cohesive universe. Anybody that's gone comes back in at some point. Like everybody is a player mm -hmm. in a series of games here, and like nobody's wasted, and and that's effective because yeah, you got some good villain, you got some good Batman characters in this movie. You got Batman, Catwoman, the Riddler, uh, Penguin is here. I mean. That's not a bad start. That's not a bad start for like the first Batman flick. And at three hours, you'd think that would feel overstuffed, but it doesn't. It's got good pacing. I think it moves pretty effectively. What's interesting is that they don't like the, she's never called Catwoman, but she is Catwoman. You know, it's she's Selena. And then the penguin is never called the penguin. He's just odds as in Oswald. Uh, yeah. So the, so they, they do. I think I guess the Riddler does call, refer refer to himself as the Riddler, so you can't get around. But it, it really helps ground the movie, and Colin Farrell is just completely unrecognizable as as the Penguin, as Oswald Cobblepot. Uh, he's, you know, he's he's got a ton of facial ma makeup. He, he's got, like, you know, probably a fat suit or whatever. And uh, and he's got a voice. He's got this, like, you know, Brooklyn accent or, or whatever. He's like a New York gangster uh, kind of way. And he's an interesting character, too, because he's just... Um, He's not necessarily like a rival of Batman. He's just like, hey, look, I, I just run a place and I just facilitate, you know, meetings between peoples. But I'm not like I, I don't do anything myself. But he's, you know, still n not quite on the right side of the law. But uh, he, I mean, great performance from Colin Farrell. He's in the movie of a fair amount and is an important player. And for those who don't know, he will be getting uh, his own show on on HBO Max. Uh, penguin which will which will be kind of a prequel series leading up to this movie i i think yeah really anxious to see what they do with that and if they can kind of maintain the tone present in the film here uh penguin is just one small part of a var very large crime problem in gotham uh and there are other people who are also involved with that of course you've got riddler who batman is actively investigating um, but you've also got penguin who is not part of an active investigation he just kind of gets caught up in it You've got a couple crime bosses. Uh, you got you got the Falcones and the Maronis. I, I'm not even I don't even know if that's exactly what their names are, but you got a you got a crooked DA. Like Gotham is really really rotten to the core in this movie, and it's presented in such a great way because Gotham is so gothic, so gothic in this movie. Bruce it's Wayne's house looks like gothic. the yeah, Bruce Bruce Wayne's house looks like the inside of like like a cathedral turned inside out. It looks like you would have Gotham. It looks like you would have gargoyles on the inside of his house. Like, <laughs> his, and the rest his house of Gotham, is ridiculous. Like, it, it is. Yeah, ridiculous. I was like, and the rest, like, in the rest yeah. of Gotham is is similar fashion. There's a funeral scene where they go to a big church and like it's this towering obelisk of stone and spires in the back, like stained glass, and like Gotham is is really 
really visually unique in this movie in a way that that feels different than everybody else which is good and the crime bit honestly feels a bit of the same uh just because you're getting into a lot of the same characters and, and i do start to feel like it reminds me of like batman begins right when christopher nolan's talking to or christopher nolan uh christian bale's talking to, to the crime bosses i don't even, I don't remember what the, the thing was in that movie um, but this movie stands apart in, in kind of this long overarching plot. There's there's a plot running underneath uh, uh, just our, our, our overall Riddler plot, plot. It's B plot. It's a lot of mob talk and a lot of double crossing, I think. And a lot of it happens <laughs> a lot verbally of names. without a lot of flashbacks. And that's worth talking about. Yeah, the, there is uh, yeah a complex... Uh, problem in the, that the crime bosses are kind of mixed in with the corrupt politicians. You know, it's like they're kind of doing the dirty work, or they, you know, some of them they get they they got in their pocket or are indebted to them. Uh, that that sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, like we have the Falcones, and there's mention of uh, there's no uh, there's no one playing uh, Salvatore Moroni in this movie, but he's he is just a uh, reference, and it's classic Batman uh, villain, or you know, the, the crime family. Um, it, it, it's complicated and it involves everyone. Um, that's kind of one of the, I was going to say, we should probably get into criticisms at some point. Yeah, uh, it's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. The, the B pot gets a little convoluted. It does. Yeah. Um, um, I think in his effort to keep this feeling like a comic book or noir film, like Matt Reeves doesn't often cut away to flashback. Which is good, honestly, in a lot of cases, because you expect when you go to see a Batman movie, you see a lot of flashbacks to young Bruce Wayne and Thomas and Martha Wayne. And it's nice that those are really limited, like in, in the way they're presented in the movie. We in didn't addition, have to but, see the pearls. It's right. You didn't, see, you didn't see Martha Wayne's pearls flying into the air after she's falling in the alley when she's shot by Joe Chill or whoever. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't happen in this movie. I don't believe it. I figured for sure we'd see Martha's pearls. Uh but uh, you also don't get a lot of flashbacks to this B plot stuff. You think you'd see mobsters, you know, talking in in sh crappy ballrooms. Like, no, you you don't get any of that stuff. Like, it's really just Batman's hanging a guy over a ledge. And he's like, "Tell me what you know," and the guy just blurts it all out, and then we're <laughs> into the next scene. Like, you don't you you don't get a lot of the visual, and I think that's okay. It makes it a thoughtful movie. It's thought provoking. It's it's a detective story. You're supposed to kind of think and muse on it. But I have heard people say it's boring. And that's why I feel like if you're going to compare this as a film to other films, you may say, okay, this one's a little long, a little dry in parts. I didn't feel that way, but I, I feel like I can understand that criticism because, yeah, it, it, there's, there's bits that are. I mean, I, I was totally with it the whole time. It does. Uh, it has this. The same issue appears in The, the Dark Knight, which is um, at the end of And I'm, I'm going to use that to avoid spoilers for this film. But when we get to the uh, everyone's trying to leave Gotham and it has the two fairies and th there's that whole plot to they're going to blow each other up um, in the dark night. And it's that whole sequence feels a little tacked on to me all the time. And yeah. the movie would be like 20 minutes shorter without it. That We get a little kind of similar incident here where like the main story is happening for the first two two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. And then we kind of get a little bit of a kind of a disaster movie that, that, that wraps it all up. But it seems a little bit kind of ham fisted. Yeah. It, it come. It's not a, I, don't, I, I guess the term I'm looking for is surprise. Like when you're sitting in the theater, it's so slow paced that by the time we get to an explosive finale, I'm um, just like an explosion. It's blown up before you are even ready for it. And you're like, Oh God, we're already like well into this, this new set of actions uh, that we're excited for our Cape Crusader to have to deal with. Um, and, and you're right. I, I think that's fair. I think a big part of the reason that is, is uh, I, I think it's attempted to be kind of dealt with in, uh, Batman's investigation. Uh, Batman makes mistakes in this movie, and it's great. Like he's two years into it, he's not that he's not the perfect detective yet. Like he's still figuring it out. He's still he's still putting technology together. He's still working on how he's supposed to fly through Gotham. Like he's he's still developing some technologies and some methods. Uh, and part of the reason, like we arrive so abruptly in our third act, is because Batman makes a series of. Um, you know, choices and decisions that ultimately bring us around to our finale. 
And I think that's good. I, I think it feels like our characters are driving for us. We are riding along with Batman throughout the whole thing. Not even Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne's barely in the movie. Like it, it is almost Batman all the time. And like in a way, that feels so fitting for a Batman movie. Like it, it feels like exactly you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, like you're 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 coming along with Cape Crusader. It even opens opens with that with the voiceover, just just like a Batman comic would open with that like internal monologue of Bruce as he's like working his way through the night, right? And like fighting crime. It, it'd start with him being like, you know, Gotham or whatever. Uh it does that. And like that that makes it feel very grounded. It makes us feel very close to Bruce Wayne, and it makes us feel very close to the bat. I think that's how I felt anyway. Mm -hmm. no absolutely uh, i was i was trying to trying to think of of other kind of issues the, the score the no. score uh, the score is fantastic uh by michael uh giacchino fantastic score yeah who, who uses very little uh th there's only like three themes like batman catwoman and uh where they all have their own theme and then everything else is uh this kind of incidental uh sounding or just kind of mood depending on on what's going on yeah um batman's got a new theme here uh it's great <laughs> so memorable everyone knows love the now. Batman theme in this movie yeah like it's really good it, it feels strong and it, it feels dark and like yeah it's it's good it's it's really good music um have you, have you been listening back on spotify going back and uh yeah definitely yeah i've tried I, i'm not i'm not quite that visual usually i need a, i need the movie to go along with it but <sighs> I don't know. As far as other critiques go, I mean, I'll admit that there there are certain a few moments that feel a little long, like, and that's okay. I don't know if you can trim twenty minutes out. Um, but additionally, Matt Reeves says he's got a four hour cut of this that he wants to put on Blu Ray. So, oh my gosh, I'm there for which it. I would watch. <laughs> I would watch Zack Snyder's. Uh, you know, Matt, yeah. I was gonna say Zach the Snyder's, Reeves cut, the Batman. Yeah, Matt Reeves, the Batman. Yeah, like the the ultimate director's cut. Maybe that'll be in four by three in black and white. Um, yeah. I think I think that sounds cool. I, I like what's happening here. I, I like the tone of this character. I like how grounded he feels. Um, it's it's unique and, and in some ways reminds me of, yeah, I think DC's stronger properties, right? Things like the Joker or are at times even even as being as grounded as something like Shazam. Like there, there are a few moments of genuine comedy in this film. Um, and I think that's important. Like it, it, it makes the character feel important. Like and it makes it feel like uh we're seeing something really special because we are. And and I think the Batman might just be something really special. It's, it's a very good movie. It might even be a great one. Andy, any other thoughts for recommendations? No, I think I'm ready. Andy, would you recommend the Batman? Yes, of course. Highly, highly recommend. Unless you just happen to hate comic book films or are people who are not into the superhero thing. But uh, for everyone else uh, who goes to the movie, movies, highly recommend. It was a lot of fun. Very different kind of movie. Uh, but still true to the the comics and and batman as, as we know him as as a character it's very much a detective story uh full of uh, this dark gritty rainy gotham with lots of corruption both in in political circles and outside we have a lot of characters a lot of fun we don't have a ton of action um compared to other, other films uh there's a big car chase scene uh, that you've you've seen some of in in the trailers uh, that happens about midway and then we get a little bit more towards the end we don't have the kind of typical marvel finale which is usually where there's just a big like fight and everyone shows off their, their powers in the last 20 minutes uh we don't have that that kind of finale it's not that that kind of movie uh, but it, it does have a action in certain spots it's just not overly kind of concerned with that uh so a lot of fun great performances highly recommend I think it's telling we both forgot to talk about the action. Yes, the action is not bad. It's very good. Uh, it's just overshadowed by the larger por portion of the film, which is, you know, the, the detective stuff, which is exciting. Yes, big recommendation on the Batman. Huge recommendation on the Batman. Uh, run, do not walk to your nearest theater to see the Batman. Um, the Batman's great. And it's not for everybody, unfortunately, while I say, oh, everybody should go see it um not necessarily like if you're going to be bored by like a three-hour film like maybe wait for it to come to streaming i if hbo keeps up with their release schedule it should be on streaming in mid-april i think um unless they hold it or push it or do something special with it um so it'll be available but i think the best spot to see this is probably movie theater 
uh, maybe even D box, like Andy said, maybe, maybe go big and get the nice tickets with like the big cushy seats and, and the big, uh, you know, the big speakers and the big popcorn. Maybe that's a good idea because the Batman is something really special. Um, and I think it's great. And I'm excited to see more. I hope that, I hope they green light a sequel very soon. If they ever make a sequel, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. 